This is my blood, and only one of these 10 Venus flytraps are going to eat it at the end of this series. But how will we figure out which one deserves it the most? Well, they each have their own tactics, personalities, and experiences which they'll use to outdo each other and get the fastest time in this series, the Flytrap Games. Yet this flytrap is feeling the pressure. In 2013, DCXL was hand selected to compete against the biggest and most popular flytrap in the world, B52. And up until now, he was proving himself. He even set a record, completed a double catch, and scored the best ever average time in one of his first events of this competition all as a baby plant. Yet all that confidence he built was destroyed by the very competitor he's meant to steal the crown from, B-52. As the world's biggest and most popular flytrap, B-52's slip up in episode 7 was very unusual. Which is when DCXL capitalized on this mistake and created his first and last one minute lead. Because the very next opportunity B-52 had, he redeemed himself by completely obliterating DCXL's world record and brought himself within striking distance of DCXL's lead. And seeing as this plant is still so immature, it's a guess as to how well he's going to handle the heat. And by immature, I mean he's literally still a baby plant. So think about this. He's a baby plant in a competition with the top predators in the greenhouse. He knows that he can't miss this catch and waste his energy. He also needs to get a double catch here for double points so that he can beat the king of all fly traps. As this, this is his purpose. And that, that's a lot of stress even for me. Oh damn. Poor guy choked under all that pressure and at the very last moment got his timing wrong. This is a devastating loss for him as this 3 minute penalty opens up a massive opportunity for B52 to take over. Hopefully the rest of his run won't be the same as what's happening to our jungle warrior, Tiger Teeth. Last summer, the plants were having a very serious war with the flies and wasps. The flies kept finding ways into their greenhouse and trampled over the baby fly traps, which drains their energy and kills them. And as for the wasps, well, they attacked Peaches in event 4 and stole her catch right out of her mouth. And while the reasons Peaches keeps missing her catches are starting to reveal themselves, the wasp war is at a standstill right now because it is winter. And all of this has put Tiger Teeth in a strange position. Hell, in his first ever event, Event 3, he showed the world that double catches were possible. And since then, other flytraps have copied him with double and even triple catches. He was the reinforcements for the war, yet after the war went cold, he's stopped catching bugs. And with this being his last ever catch in the competition, he needs to do well enough to at least pull himself just one spot higher on the leaderboard to get past Red, the typical flytrap. It would be embarrassing for him to be the only specialized cultivar that doesn't beat both typicals, especially since he was brought in to help them against the fly and wasp army. Yet, when the stress of performance gets to you, just like it got to DCXL earlier, it can really mess you up. However, it seems as if Tiger Teeth isn't going to be happy with just a single catch. If he catches two or more bugs, he could double, triple, or even quadruple his points. And it seems as if he might be trying to go for this in a last ditch effort to pull himself above red, which would honestly save his reputation. He just needs to be sure he won't regret this decision, as if he takes too long, he will hit the time limit and a triple catch won't help him there. Oh damn, he nearly had that fly too! This is what happens when greed gets the better of you, and your time limit starts getting close. You rush things. And don't think that having long teeth could have saved him here, because the top contestant doesn't have any either. 
It's always said that the longer the teeth, the easier the catch. But Dracula is proving that wrong. Peaches, who is at the bottom of the leaderboard, has long teeth. Yet she always misses. Or maybe she just has soft misses and lets them escape. But Dracula, on the other hand, has never missed once. This proves that there's more to a catch than just how a trap physically looks. There's timing, colors, and even different scents. And for some plants, what seems like strategies. So it's no wonder that Dracula, the most mysterious of all our fly traps, is doing so well because no one can figure out his secrets of winning without looking like a traditional fly trap. Additionally, unlike all the other fly traps, no one really knows what he wants to do with the blood if he wins. All we do know is that flies are basically under his control when they get near him. Like this fly here. It's walking straight towards him without a second thought. And there we see it. He's got to be showing off that mysterious strategy here. You don't need teeth to catch your food. You can have little knives like this and still win. This just further proves that Peaches seems to be losing on purpose. Every single one of her catches has been the same. Soft miss after soft miss. She even has long teeth, which doesn't help her claim that she isn't strong enough to catch bugs. However, last episode, it was revealed how Red doesn't end up catching food for the competition when Peaches misses. Well, some people have mentioned that it's because he is basically giving her attention. Attention which she likes. Bear with me here, I know they're plants, but plants often flower together, and in some cases, even work together by sending out specific signals which could cause other plants nearby to flower too. And as we know, flowers should be cut off unless we want to make seed, as this drains them of their energy. But what is the one type of fly trap most people let flower anyway because they just don't care? That's right, typicals, just like her and Red. To top it all off, he is the only typical I have ever seen with such beautiful coloration. It's almost as if their babies could be so good looking that they themselves could become cultivars. Now it's just a theory, but if she misses every single catch, which causes Red to not want to move, they'll just end up sitting together in their part of the greenhouse. And seeing as they're one of the only plants whose flowers I wouldn't cut off because they're just boring typicals, they will end up making seeds together. And the craziest part of all of this is that Red hasn't even thought about this once. He's been trying to win this competition, so it'll be interesting to see what happens between them in her last catch next episode. This isn't even a surprise. All of her catches are nearly identical. She has a slow and soft miss, which keeps her in the greenhouse next to Red. You know, if Red still had one more catch to go, I would have forced them to compete together, just to see if they would work together to catch a bug. Yet, it is a fact that some plants could never hunt together. Some competitors, like Spider, is the biggest and most dangerous flytrap in the greenhouse as he literally steals all the food from the other fly traps. And if he was hunting with someone like Peaches, she would never see another fly again, unlike Spider who has eaten flies, wasps, and even spiders. And although he wants his biggest ever catch to be a human, he's going to need something good for his last ever catch today if he wants to move up the leaderboard. However, he has one fatal flaw. He often leaves his old catches in his traps, just like this, which is a tactic to attract more food towards him. This is how he ended up catching a wasp in episode 4, as the wasp thought this dead fly was an easy snack until it itself became the snack. Yet having skeletons on his traps isn't always the best idea if he isn't going to attract something like a wasp or spider. This is exactly the issues he has. These dead flies are holding the trap open. Ah, oh, this fly's got this. It's such a simple way out. This just proves that sometimes a strategy can work when hunting other predators, 
but it won't work for hunting smaller prey. And although using bait in the form of skeletons works very well for catching things like spiders and wasps, it's not the only way to catch them. While some fly traps, like spider, are sticky and hold on to their skeletons, some fly traps end up with clean traps thanks to the wind and rain. And as much as wasps love meat, they also love water and nectar, especially the nectar which Sharktooth uses in his traps. Yet wasps being addicted to nectar is useless without the ability to remain calm, especially because they are one of the only bugs that can escape from a trap. Luckily for Sharktooth, his laid-back attitude has really helped him to remain calm in this competition, as being stressed like almost all the other flytraps today has resulted in a lot of missed catches. So if he wants to follow his shark ancestors and get that blood, he'll need to tap into whatever shark brain he thinks he has and hunt like one. However, he probably knows nothing. Almost everything he knows about sharks seems to come from TV, and on top of that, he is a plant. He is barely related to any kind of animal, but if he thinks he's related to them just because of his name, then he will need to prove that by catching this wasp without messing up. And although wasps really do love the nectar from fly traps, it's a really good idea for Sharktooth to take his time here, as they are the one insect that can push and even bite their way out of a trap if they are quick enough. Oh, he got it! He just has to hold it back, which shouldn't be a problem for him. The flytrap nectar has got this wasp pretty drunk. Wow, Sharktooth, he's done well, and the 10 bonus points must really help his position on the leaderboard. With some of the best times we have ever seen on the leaderboard, things are now getting tight as we get to the last two episodes of the series. Please leave a like and subscribe to the channel as the next episode of the series is already out and on screen right here. If you want to know how Peaches reacts to Red finding out what she's been doing, or if you want to see what happens between B52 and DCXL, it's all in the next episode. I'll see you there.